All right. Welcome to Master the Game. I am Juice, and today we are working on the squid fountain, as I'm calling it, because of the tentacles on the side. Squid fountain. Yeah, it's actually the Whiz Kids water fountain that's got this guy on the top. Um, I'm assuming it's like a Poseidon or something, right? Isn't it the god of the sea or something? Yeah. I'm assuming it's Poseidon or something, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, this little fountain, and um, you know. It's something like that. Yeah. But, you know, not crooked. <laughs> it was all taken apart, sorry. It'll look awesome here when it's done being painted, for sure. So what's the plan with it tonight? You no, know, I don't like this water. I, you suggested I do this water. Do it however you want. I, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know if it looks like water. It looks better in the camera than it does. It's just got to be represent. It's because when you're looking yeah. at it on camera, you're looking at it straight on. In real life, you're looking at it on an angle. Yeah, it looks worse at an angle. But I, Yeah, but I wouldn't worry about it. It just has to be representative. It's representative. It looks like water to me. Okay. Like, if I pull out... Hang on. Let me pull out a water Okay. Medicine. Okay. Where am I watering? I mean, is it, if you say it looks like what it's supposed to look like, then I guess it looks like... Here's like a water elemental. Like. That looks worse on camera. Yeah, this looks like terrible. Right. But Whatever. it's a water elemental. Whatever. Okay. Well, I mean, at least like the stone looks pretty good. Yeah, I think it looks great. You know, I, I wouldn't be so critical of it. I don't know. It'll look good. I'm gonna not be critical of it. That's hilarious. There you go. There's a water elemental. A water weird. Which I think this looks cool as it is. But it needs the stone painted on the bottom. Should, should I have done this bottom? I didn't do it. That's uh, it's your call. Would it's you paint the bottom it. of another mini? No, that sounds stupid. There you go. Okay, alright. So, I guess we're at this point. Then, so we can start to paint these tentacles. Mm -hmm. And get those done. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Time I'm to buying paint it. Some tentacles. I'm buying in. Painting some tentacles. So, look what I. So, remember how I had that gift certificate I told you about that I won at Con Plus 3? Okay. So, here's all the minis I put on there Monster Corpses. It's like four. Four. Adventures equipment. It's like different types of equipment bundles. It might be kind of cool because the way I figured is this is stuff that I'd probably use a lot in our games. Mm -hmm. It has multi-purpose. It could be like the treasure in the dungeon. It could be set up for a campsite. It could be whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, there's a map table where the middle of it, pick, it's like a like a strategy map um, for like a war table. Okay. Where the top actually comes off and then it reveals like a poker table under it. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so there's that. I saw that. Uh, Becky Rose showed us that in on the stream. A sorcerer's table, which is a lot like a wizard's table, but it had like some potions on it. So that's why I was like, oh, that would be cool. It's got like a book, and then it's got some different things on it. Mm -hmm. A rustic throne that the way it's built, it looks like you could actually set a mini on the throne. So check that out. Well, that's kind of cool. A tomb where the lid actually comes off and it has a skeleton or something, or a mummy inside of it. Uh -huh. And it's like got skulls around it and stuff. Uh, four fallen adventurers, which could be used for just random people or adventurers that have fallen in combat. Right. And that's it. Dead bodies. Yeah. So, and that's it. Um, and Do so have, then. Is that, is that everything? Or like. Yeah, that uses have... up my 25. But then uh, I would need. I think it comes out to. I would need $18.29 to complete the order of our own money. And then we get all that. Oh, okay. So I did the conversion of pounds to U.S. dollars. So I didn't order it yet because I wanted to run it by you. But it would be something we could definitely paint on stream. Mm, okay, that's 
this one looks like they might be okay-ish fun. Okay, cool. I'll, uh, I'm not, I'm not usually I'll place the order later. big on stuff like that, but, you know, mm -hmm. it's fine. I just figured if I'm going to do stuff, I don't want to buy something that's small and I'm only going to use nice. once. Upside you know what down. I mean? Okay, so this brush is going to be too big. Too big. Did you I leave mean, your other brushes inside? No, I brought these. These are the ones I used last time. No, the ones you rinsed off and the paint trays you left inside. They're next to the sink. No, I brought them out with me. Oh, did you with the water? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know. All the paint trays. Yeah, I brought them out. These are the ones I used last night. The brush is way too big. Okay. My bad. Way, way too big. The other My one's bad. too frayed. My bad. This one's better. I need like a middle of the road size brush. So that one looks like a seashell. Mm hmm. But there's two of those. One, two, three, two. Two of those. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if they look enough like a seashell. I don't know. Or is that the tentacles? You know what I'm talking about? The suction cups? Yeah, that's what it is. They're the feeder tentacles. Wait, are there actually feeder tentacles on there? Yeah, that's what those are. Where? Because there's one right there. And then there's one right there. Look at, because there's exactly six additional tentacles. Mm. Okay. Okay. This is not an octopus, you guys. This is a, a freaking squid. Mm. You might be right. I can't tell from Let this. Let me see. It doesn't say. It just says fountain. You can't tell on this. It's not the right angle. Cannot tell. Well, this is what it's supposed to look like, you guys. Which is basically what it looks like right now. So. Yeah, I don't know. It's going to be cool. It's going to be Great. All right, let's pop out the chat. Currently, nobody's chatting. We got, uh, looks like maybe two viewers. But nobody's, uh, nobody's commenting yet. What's up with that? No, I'm just kidding. They're probably doing some other stuff. Something cool. I'm sure they are. Probably. I'm sure that they are. I did see a cool version of this finished on uh, Pinterest a while, or not Pinterest, Instagram a while ago. Oh, I was going to say, if you saw it recently and you didn't no, show me it, it was going to be ago. like all upset. Yeah, it was a while ago. I think I did show you when it happened. But yeah, it's been a really, really long time. Okay, let me share this on my personal Facebook page, see if we can drum up something. Get some some uh, chat interaction going on here. We, uh, we didn't talk about our Descent game last time, which for us, that's not normal. I mean, yes. We got distracted last time. <laughs> Understatement. Um, so, uh, I had prepped for like a long time. I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of note taking, changed my strategy and prep a little bit. Um, and felt really good going into the session. Like really good. Decided since Jake hadn't been here for a bit, well, that we should do some a little more RP than normal, right? So each scene was supposed... I set up scenes for each character individually. And... Because uh, we were all supposed to be split up. Like, starting, yeah. we, we, we were all 
like split apart and investigating different things, you know, Mm -hmm. back to the main storyline. And, um, you know, so it was arranged like that. Yes. Uh, So I set up all these plans for it. And uh, in fact, there was one scene where I wasn't really feeling up to role playing uh, the one girl. Uh, Rhea Mantle Morn, and I figured, you know what? Let's let the players role play this character, right? So I reached out to Paula first. She was like, mm, "No, I don't really want to do that." I said, "Okay." So I reached out to Nate second. <laughs> Nate was like, mm, "I don't know. If I really want to do that. I'm not really comfortable RPing for the NPC." So then I reached out to Jake, and he was like, "Yeah, sure. That sounds good." And I said, "Cool. I got a full page, like two pages." Uh, Because I added a little more after I talked to you, actually. Um, But I I had, like, two pages of notes of things she knew, um, things about her, about Thavius Krieg, um, who's the the ruler of... uh, Oh, it's Roll Stats! Uh, Thavius Krieg, the ruler of El Terrell. And um, it was good. It was a good time. Um, You know, it was was a little awkward, that scene. Luke, Luke was a little... Under the weather, I think. I think he had still had a sore throat from the night before. Was a little tired. Um, You know, so I don't think he was as inspired as normal. Um, Jake didn't really know what was going on since he hadn't been there for two sessions in a row. And uh, so it was a little bit awkward. But it seemed like once they loosened up, that that scene got better. Um, But it was a lot of fun. You know, I, I enjoyed the session. I was very critical of myself afterwards. Uh, I posted it in my Discord, which if you're not part of my Discord yet, uh, you can find it in the description below. Uh, Self-criticisms that I realized were happening in the middle of the session. Um, Like, for instance, just taking away some of the agency. Like, when you were doing your inspection scene of the villas, uh, I just told you stuff. Rather than letting you tell me what you wanted to try and do what you're trying to look for i told you just way too much um and i felt very yeah, I was bad supposed about to that. be doing like recon on a villa and he's like yeah you get there and you walk down the hill hey, hey and careful like, what you say though this yeah. is a module and he was like and here's what here's you need all to know. the Boo-boo. entrance and exits to the building and here's a picture of the building and here's here's how you pick the combination lock no i'm just kidding you didn't say that but like it was just like it was bad Here's every single. Here's she makes me feel even worse about it. <laughs> of the windows, and then he's like, "So what do you want to do?" And I'm like, "Well, I don't know. I'm doing recon, so like you basically just told me everything. So I don't know. Like I only have a handful of questions, I guess." Right. So, anyways, you know. now that she's made me feel bad about it again, I can go into self-loathing again tonight. Um, I also did the same thing to Nate a little bit, but I stopped myself. I just think that, middle. so the ironic part is that he openly says, I, I want you and Nate to role play more because you guys don't get, don't quite get into it as much. You're quiet. And uh, right yeah, there. we're quiet. And then we're supposed to have these scenes where we can role play more and he like removes the player agency and our ability I to bombed. role play. And he's like, but you guys are quiet, so like you need to speak up more. And it's like, well, like, what exactly do you want me to say, man? I bombed it. So part of my thing was, is because I felt like in the past I haven't been prepared enough. So this time, I'd, I'd rather than... So when I've taken notes in the past, it's just been like, oh, here's a stat block, here's some names I need to know, whatever. Because I'm using a module, right? I can find everything in the book. However, I've struggled to find things in the book when I've needed to. And it's made me feel stupid at the table as a DM. So, this time I was like, I'm not going to use the book as much. I'm going to try to keep it in my notes like I would a normal session. However, because I've wanted to have good details for different things, I wrote too much in there. And the mistake I made that I know better. I've been DMing long enough that I know I shouldn't have done this, and I even before this I knew this. But I prepared with the like stuff that the players are doing, and you never do that. You prepare the stuff around the players. You don't say, "This is what you do." Like, I don't know what happened. I really don't know. <laughs> 
I wrote crap in there that I shouldn't have wrote in there, you know, and uh, it showed. So I was I was kicking myself about that. I mean, it was it, it like we are over exaggerating, you know, or I am exaggerating. Well, but like you know, that's a no. I mean, you're not exaggerating what happened, but we might be exaggerating how bad it was. But at the yes. same time, I truly feel like. It was bad what I did, but I still think everybody had fun. Yeah, it did Except like, for Luke. He should have went to bed at it like It didn't seven. like ruin the game or anything <laughs> like that. Right. At least that's how I feel. Jake was having a good old time. I talked to him till like three or four in the morning. Yeah, have you talked great. to him since then? Not yet. I need to reach out to him. I know he was oh, busy okay. running games and stuff. And uh, Sunday he had like two games. And I think he ended up calling the second one probably because he was tired or something else was going on somebody else or something but um yeah no and I, I just know he runs a lot of games i need to reach out to him here in the next couple of days did they ever respond to your message nope nobody said anything what so nobody cares about my strategy that's okay luke had a video that went up either today or yesterday about how to run published modules and i so feel attacked by his little skit in the beginning <laughs> You have to watch it afterwards. It was great. Uh, Rollstat says, everyone has an off night juice. As long as everybody had fun, no harm, no foul. Yeah, for sure. I agree with that. I, uh, Like I said, I, I know I'm being a little hard on myself, but at the same time, it's hard for me not to. So, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, I, I again, I'm, I'm somebody who's always analyzing what I do I'm always trying to do better and um, so I'm always comparing my current session to my last session it's just how I operate um, so yeah hopefully I won't do that as much in the future I don't know we'll see so how you doing roll stats it's been a minute we haven't seen you around in the chats Um, well, we haven't really been around, so... What are you talking about? We did this yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I mean, where the hell were you yesterday? Like, I'm so offended you didn't show hey, up. Hey, Paula, Paula, time. relax. Everyone has an off night. As long as everybody has fun, no harm, no foul. Shh. <laughs> You're dumb. Nah. Swamped as hell. That's no good. Oh, at work or like just in life in general? I was going to say, I haven't seen those new videos we talked about. Those are new videos? Mm-hmm. He was a guest on my channel. Oh, okay. Uh, one of the first people since I started redoing my interviews and stuff in my chats. Okay. And, uh... Yeah, he, we were talking about him doing more videos, moving forward. Mm. I understand being swamped. I did five streams in three days over the weekend. Today I did two. This is my second one. Tomorrow I got one. Thursday I got one. Currently none on Friday, and I got one on Saturday. But knowing myself, I will probably stream Friday night. Whether it's mini painting or it's me prepping for the Saturday game, I'm not sure yet. We'll see how my prep comes um, between now and Friday. That's looking kind of cool. So my prep though for Saturday's game should be pretty easy because we talked about this. You're, you guys are basically going into a super dungeon, remember? Mm -hmm. You got the session ended with you guys finding that secret door. Oh yeah. And yeah, then you were going down goes. to the second level. But you, I had talked to you and I told you it was probably going to be a super dungeon. That's a great idea. I know. I'm excited about it. 
Yeah, I work. Three of my largest clients are education-based, two of which are directly related to distance and virtual learning. I barely have time to breathe. Oh, yeah, man. I feel like at work, everybody is either completely slumped or, like, things are dead. Yeah. I get that. We're totally slumped. (laughs) We were reporting... We were reporting sales the other day, and <laughs> we were like, we're up 278% to last year. <laughs> oh, jeez. 178% over plan. <laughs> it was, like, ridiculous. Yeah, but it worked out okay. I know. Or and it's I'm, working out okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm doing. You got it under control. Ooh, it is warm out here, but well, it has I been told 90 you degrees. So. You could turn off a couple of these lights. Or That's something. not making that big a difference when it's 90 degrees outside. Um, it does make a difference. Not that these much. These lights are hot. I'm hot to look at. He says, I'm working and watching you now. Dude, you should watch me all the time. Actually, so we've had some cool guests recently on the RPG talk show on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, today we talked to, uh, Steve, oh gosh, now I'm drawing a blank on the name. Uh, Karen? No, that's not right. Oh my goodness, I shouldn't have even said it. Well, anyways, Thursday we have Crystal Frazier from Green Ronin. Uh, I had Joseph Carricker last week. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, it's been really awesome though, you know, and obviously with all, them all working from green ronin i've been able to ask some some pretty interesting things i think as it pertains to some of their game lives like mutants and masterminds is a lot of what we talked about today uh which is a superheroes rpg which is close to home for me because superheroes are what got me into tabletop rpgs in the first place so uh so that was awesome steve kenson what was i calling it karen karen i was getting to mix up with joseph character's last name But yeah, Steve Kenson. So he started in the 90s and uh, for uh, Onyx Path, I believe. And uh, you'll have to watch the the episode, but we talked a lot about his start in the business because I like to figure out everyone's backstory. And some people I know, you know, because I do the research, but I still want them to say it in case there's anybody watching who's never, you know, heard of what they've done before. Um, Especially since I'm more of a and d channel. You know, so the fact that they they represent different game lines and stuff, uh, I don't think a lot of my audience probably knows who these people are. Um, but yeah, so he, uh, most of his stuff has been like superhero stuff, which is mm-hmm. really cool. Uh, he wore the uh, Mutants and Mastermind setting um, is his baby. He actually made that and pitched it to another game line that ended up not being able to use it at the time oh that's interesting yeah so uh then he pitched it to christopher Premus, and christopher Premus ran with it and uh you know signed a, a small book deal for mutants and masterminds and that and uh it worked so yeah and the rest is history here we are like 15 20 years later uh he says i know i haven't Really had time to watch live, but I've been watching the uploads. Cool, cool. Yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun, man. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, I did watch your mini painting stream yesterday, today. I don't know how I missed it. <laughs> we So I try to post in advance, but I don't always post in advance that we're going to do it. Because there's some days where we're planning on doing it and something comes up. And, uh, you know, and so I... I try to push it out as long as I can while still promoting it. Yeah, sometimes it's just hard where, you know, it's like, okay, are we going to paint tonight or are we not going to paint tonight? And for a little while there were issues like with internet, I think, because everybody was adapting to working from home. Right. Yeah, and then also with working from home, that means our games also were not going to be played. So it was like, well, we don't need to have a miniature before this Saturday now. Like... The urgency kind of came off, right? With miniature painting. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. 
but we're getting back at it just for the fun of it now. Uh, so I'll be honest, the Supers games are not my favorites. I don't hate them or anything, just not my preference. So why is that? Do you like superhero comics? Do you like uh, the superhero movies? Uh, what? Why is it that it's not your favorite? Do you not feel like the games are fun to play just because of how it is? I'd like to hear more. I love superheroes. I, I Growing up a huge wrestling fan, the stuff that interested me about wrestling is the idea of booking my own shows in the first place. Um, so, like, playing RPGs is kind of like that, too. Like, you can have a superhero and run them the way you want them to run. You know? Tell the stories you want to tell. So, you know. So, I always loved them. Uh, it seems like it would be hard to create your own adventures for them. I wouldn't even know where to start. Well, give me an example. Like... Come up with a bad guy and what he's doing right now and maybe I can help you. I mean, I think you got to think about, like, well, what kind of world do you want them to be in? I mean, sure. you can do any sort of world. You can do any sort of... I think it's hard because, yeah. like, there's, there's, there's more... There's less limits. But is there... Like, think about it. So your bad guys... You got to have a motivation for your bad guys and like you said your world. So what do you mean by different worlds? Well, you could have like a DC style universe, Marvel style, which is more realistic like ours. You could pl and it also depends on what kind of I mean like anything, but what comic book style do you want? Do you want it to if you want it comic book style? Do you want it to be like Guardians of the Galaxy or the Avengers where it's like this epic thing or do you want it to be like Batman or Spider-Man where it's city level? You know, like, that's what you have to figure out world-wise, right? Yeah. And I mean, tech-wise. Again, it's easy. I find playing in current day world is fine because you can just Google things that you need and then just add the vigilanteism on top of it where, hey, you know, just because you have superpowers doesn't mean you can just go in and blast people <laughs> like without pissing off the government, right? So I like more realistic style worlds. Kind of like Marvel. You know, like X Men. That's kind of my my go to feel. That's your thing. I love it. Yeah, and the idea of when you are playing superheroes with people, X Men is a perfect dynamic, right? You know, you've got everyone with their different roles. Like Cyclops, Jean Grey, or Storm are the leaders, right? Wolverine's the run in and hit it first, ask questions later type. You know, uh, Gambit is your rogue. <laughs> You know, Jubilee's kind of like your bard without the inspiration die. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. Jubilee never does like anything. Right, because she was a kid. But like, so Roll Stats says, I feel like I would be stuck with pre-written constantly. Well, so if you then, you, you know what your feel is, right? You then go with, okay, who are my villains? Which villain do I want to use tonight? Okay, what would what are their motivations in the world and what are some things they're going to do to achieve those motivations, right? To achieve their goals. That's it, right? So I'll just pull a Magneto out there, right? So Magneto uh, wants to make mutants the cream of the crop, right? He wants them to be, you know, forever and wants humans to be extinct because they're inferior genetically and because they're full of hatred towards mutants, right? Um, so what are some things he could do? Well, he might be trying to get a missile to blow up a city, right? So now he's got to steal technology to get this giant missile that's going to blow up New York City, right? Yeah, but I think the technology part is the part that's difficult for me because it's like, um, yeah, see? A game set in modern day. Right. Yeah, it's... It it's does seem a lot, daunting. but it's because there's so there's so many things, you know, like it's it's less it's less predictable what <clears throat> characters are gonna do. And that right. means that it's a lot more improv. Sure. And it's a lot harder to <coughs> prep for, like, as a DM. So it just sounds like a lot of extra work. Well, your quest givers now are radio stations, television channels, the internet, Twitter, like all those things you can translate to the game. 
Like, or you could do it episodic, right? And just start the session in the action or start the session with the hook, you know? So you can you can do a little bit more railroad, but then let off a little to let them figure out ways to solve it, right? Like the Magneto missile thing, right? So it doesn't matter what you're... You can ask your players what they've been doing in their downtime, right? Like, what have you been doing, uh, Beast? Oh, I've been studying in my lab a new whatever. Oh, great. What about you? You, you know, and you go around the table. Wolverine, what have you been doing? Oh, I'm training. Great. So then you go... You, you kind of cut, right? And you know what your your bad guy's doing. He just broke into a lab and he's stealing, you know, plutonium, right? But he, it's going to take him a while because he's got to work through the security and everything and get down into the basement to get it and then get out. So he does that. Police are called, right? All these things are happening in the background. You, I mean, you don't have to actually say these things, but these are all happening in the background. The news gets a hold of it. Beast goes on the internet and he's searching for his concoctions, right? So that's where you say, yeah, you're, you're surfing the internet looking for, you know, some information on something and you stumble across a headline on the, the news website that popped up as your homepage. Uh, Magneto, breaking news, broke into, you know, the military lab to steal plutonium. Okay, so there's the hook. Now the other players can get it through similar means or whatever. Someone yeah, could call but what along. Is, the question is then like, okay, so like what are they going to do now about it? So if, they're sure. st- if he's still in the lab, maybe they're going to go check out the lab. But maybe right. they want to go like ask somebody about something somewhere. I don't know. That I wouldn't just... be an instance where you'd ask someone, though. You wouldn't have time. That's a time-sensitive thing. Just like in D&D, you have some things that might be time-sensitive. You have other things that aren't time-sensitive. But rather than getting your information at the tavern, having to walk three days to the caves, you get the information in a house, in your headquarters, and you either drive a car or, or fly. It's it's not... You just have to change the thinking of it. And the reason I, I say this is because I had the same problems when I first tried to run Heroes for us 10 years ago. You know what I mean? It was really hard for me to wrap my head around how you ran a Heroes game because of the same reasons you guys have said. Yeah. It's I'm still just... different. Don't get me wrong. But you just have to take certain things in that you're comfortable with just, and try to think, think about them differently. I think it's harder to play, like, for me, it's harder to, like, play a character that I don't have any knowledge of. What do you mean? The things that they have knowledge of. You know, but what's that have to do with heroic games rather than like D and D, for example? Like you're not a sorcerer in real life, but you love sorcerers. I mean, I guess you're trying to be a sorcerer in real life. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <sighs> um, I mean, like I don't know anything about like I don't know. Seems hard. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying it's easy. I know it's not the like, easiest thing. Oh, okay. I want to, you know, break into this thing. And it's like, oh, well, they would have this type of security versus this type of security. Well, you don't need to know that. Like, you don't need to know that, though. But you might, your characters might need to know that so that you. No, they don't. Do you need to know how to pick a lock? For a rogue to pick a lock? No, you just need to know the door is locked and that you have thieves tools and that's it. I don't know, it's man. no different than your character be it's a it's an electronic lock system on a building. That's all you need to know. Oh, you got a tech guy? Great. He's going to try to hack into it. That's it. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know how to program a computer to role play that. You just need to know like some terminology here and there that you've you've worked in electronics like you get you should be able to say some stupid stuff it's just like 80s movies that talk about hacking and it's like on the keyboard and it like it's showing all this crap that has nothing to do with hacking <laughs> right <laughs> we're all fancy <stats> great <laughs> what paula is not actually a sorcerer i am so disappointed yeah well you know 
I mean... I thought she was too, but I was disappointed as well. Okay, so this is looking okay-ish. Well, don't judge it based on camera. We in person are what matters. I know, but like, also it's helpful to see. Is it though? It is. All right, if you say so. So, are you thinking of what mini you're going to paint next? No, I'm thinking of how to paint this one. Oh, okay. okay. Like, I'm not even done yet. Okay. I was just I'm curious. I'm close to done. I was just I'm curious. close. I got to paint this dude up here. That's like a whole mini by himself. Yeah, but he could be stone too. Basically. Give him a, like a different colored trident and make everything else just stone. Right? That's less cool that way. Give him a different color eyes too so we could always claim it's like gemstones or something instead. That's less cool. That's really cool. What are you talking about? It puts more focus on the trident in his eyes and everything else is just what it is. What statues are actually like not stone? Tell me, like, I mean, Statue of Liberty is green. That's because it's made of copper. <laughs> okay. And because they like, paint over it every time. But it's still one solid color. Most statues are one solid color. I guess I just feel like it's easier to hand wave a fantasy world because players know. They expect things to be different. Natural flaws don't apply, you know? Whereas in a supers game, it seems like there would be more research involved. Does that make sense? It could, yeah. I, I, I get it. I 100% I understand the overwhelming nature of a supers RPG. I get it. But we also have a, uh, I understand this, not, not all statues are stone. My point is that all statues are typically <laughs> the same color. Like they're, they're one made... color. They're not dynamic. They're not like painted like, oh, let's make sure he has brown hair. And he needs that olive skin tone, right? Oh, but look, he's wearing a gold bracelet. We need to make it gold. Oh, but not that one because that one was silver. You know, like it's whatever. It's. Statues are typically one color. Whatever, man. We're just over here trying to make it look good. And I get it. You know, I can paint it all brown. I'm just asked. I mean, am I wrong? It's like your favorite color anyway. I didn't say to paint it brown. I'm just wondering if trying to paint it like dynamic, if it's going to look dumb because it's supposed to be a statue and now um, it looks like a real person. No, it's going to look freaking great. Is what it's going to look like. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's going to look amazing. It probably will. It's going to be the best stuff ever. I'm, I'm sure it will be. I believe in you. I got faith. But yeah, I totally understand the overwhelming nature of Supers games. I, I get it. Uh, I used to, when I'd try to run games, I'd try to make sure there was an NPC present at all times. Uh, not necessarily present, but like leading the group. Like the the Charles Xavier types. Or the Alfred to Batman. Or, you know Nick what I mean? Nick Fury. Yeah, Nick Fury to the Avengers. So that if I ever had to, I could say, hey, your, your NPC guy just called you. He needs you over here, uh, you know, because something's going on. Or whatever meet me at blah 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 to stop the bad guys right but even then like if you remember when we played i feel like there were some things i did really well right when we used to play before um not necessarily there was well for example i gave you guys the hook because of the television at the bar or restaurant you guys were at right remember that I don't remember anything about the game oh, except man. being super confused at many points in time because I didn't know what to do. As the player. Yeah. Right. So, uh, when we played before, Paula was playing a shape changer, correct? Yeah, I think that sounds right. And I remember the players were at a bar in town or a restaurant, and on the TV I had... Breaking news, a bank or a, a motorcycle club has a mutant who has uh, basically killed a bunch of guys there, right? At a motorcycle club or a bar or something, like a motorcycle club bar thing. And uh, then as that was going on, police you drove by. You were supposed to go check on Gabe. I'll go check on him. Police drove by. Yeah. Just, 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 
Okay, I'm coming in. I'm going to come check on Gabe. Read a novel, please, though. You're supposed to be, I mean, yeah, that's no. a great book, but, like, you're supposed to take another AR test. Okay? All right, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it in a little bit. I'll be in a second. Go. Just, okay. We'll, we'll talk about it in a minute. Okay. We're doing a stream, remember? When Caleb came in the other day, we had talked about not coming in here during streams and stuff. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. Okay. Go in. Go. Um, anyways, so the superheroes game, uh, I'll make it quick, but as they got the hook based on the television, the police drove by the bar. So you knew, like, oh, if they left now, they could get there, like, right after the police, right? Which you guys did. And then you shape changed into a police officer to walk in. Okay. okay. Probably a stink bug. Go. You in the need house. to have shoes on to get out of here too. I stepped on glass already, remember? Go. In the house. Um, so anyways, the police uh she shape changed into a police officer and then went and um got into the bar to the crime scene and got clues. As she got the clues, uh she ended up um figuring out like different things about the bad guy like he was a robot uh he i think he was a robot alligator or something yeah i don't know man anyway i know i know you don't even remember though it was like 10 I know. years ago it was like it's not my thing what we yeah, had remembering things isn't either though <laughs> yeah but like i'm just saying i don't know what you're talking about well i'm just explaining you know how the thing went on so then they had clues, and then they tracked, based on some of the clues, they found out information of a place to go that they went to. Because one of the other characters was a news reporter photographer. That was Rachel's character. And so, yeah. Anyways, they went to this location, and we had a really epic fight scene where, like, one of the characters put his metal arm through the trunk. And it was it was cool. But anyways. Um, yeah, that daunting. I'm going to. It wasn't that daunting. It wasn't that bad, I think. So, as a G as a GM. All right, Paula, your turn to entertain. I'm going to. <laughs> I'm such an entertaining person. Okay, dude, we played that game. And we had no idea what we were doing the entire time. Whatever. He's, he's, see, he's in the garage. I was trying to wait until he's, like, farther away. But, like, we had no idea what to do. The whole time we were like, I guess I'm going to do this. Like, but basically because we couldn't come up with anything to do. Like, we, it, we had no idea. It was so open. And there were so many options on what to do that it was like, I don't even know what to do. In this epic fight scene, like, we didn't understand what we were doing. I'm just telling you. I'm just being honest that we had we had no idea what was going on. So, you know, just for the record, don't believe him all the time. So it's an epic fight scene. We were like, I think I was the only one who knew what a D20 was. I'm just going to say that. Like, and none of us had played this game before, and none of us knew the rules, like, and, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, roll stats is what I'm saying, like, we're just, just like, nobody knows what to do, nobody knows the rules, nobody has any idea, like, you know, and the other two people had never played any RPGs before, ever. Like, ever, ever. So it was just, like, they they had less of an idea. And, I mean, I had played D&D, &D, but, like, I mean, come on. Like, that's a whole different ball game, you know? And it was hard when we created the characters because you had, you had, like, there were, like, 80 different superpowers to choose from. You know, and you're just like, well, I don't know. And so then he knows nothing about the superpowers. So then it's just on you as a player to know. And you're like, well, I have no idea. So you're just like, well, I guess let's do it this way. Like, who freaking knows? 
Nobody knows anything. Anyway. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, I, like, I don't, I don't get, I don't get the dice pools, and then it was, like, you know, the whole keeping track of, like, damage was going against, sometimes damage went against armor, and sometimes it went against something else, and, like, for half the game we did it one way, and the other half of the game we did it the other way, and nobody actually knew what they were doing. So, you know, he, it's, like, great in his head, but, like, no. Nobody had any clue. Nobody knew what was happening. So, he can say all that he wants to, but... Personally, I prefer, you know, fantasy-style games. And I've tried a couple different types of systems. And I don't I don't hate like dice pools or anything like that. I don't hate like D6 based systems or, or anything like that. It's just I'm not as used to it. So it just takes a little bit longer to figure out, you know, what's going on and how to do everything and you know, those types of things. So that's all. I hear him coming back. <laughs> I guess I'll take super strength and mental telepathy. What can I do with that? So when you picked the super abilities, you there were like lists of like majors and there were lists of minors and you got like one of each or no. you could pick like no, no, no. four minors. It's completely or random. Like it's not that. balanced. It it was just like it's a hot mess. So you can't always just do whatever you want to do. But you can cuz anyway. I I let you. I didn't make you roll for any of it. You wanted to roll. Roll for stats, it. and I were just talking about the the game. Right. Yeah, anyway. it was Heroes Unlimited. It's not balanced. Let's, it's very all over the place. Let's move on to something different, something interesting to talk about. I think it is interesting. Why do you not think it's interesting? What else could we talk about? I don't know. You tell me. You're the one that said don't like doesn't like talking about it. <laughs> mm. I like it. Oh, dude, there's so many cool powers, though, in that game. So many cool powers. Yeah, like 90 pages of them. No, there's not. You don't even know what you're talking about. No idea. There's three books of them. (laughs) Books completely dedicated to it. So there's way more than 90. (laughs) Whatever, man. Whatever. And besides, I asked you guys what you thought would be cool to play, and then we built what you thought was cool to play, ignoring rolling for how many of what abilities you got. So, yeah. Whatever, man. Whatever. So, Moving on. I feel like answering his question, though. What? Right? Because he, he said... You guys were talking about what abilities you would take, if you could take any no, abilities. No, we weren't talking about abilities at all. I guess we I'll take super strength and mental telepathy. What can I do with that? Ha, ha, ha. We, that's not what we were talking about, though. Oh. We were talking about the, the game. Okay. Itself. It's fine. Let's move on to something different. You're such a hater. She's a hater. She doesn't like things that I like on purpose because I like them. I think that's the reason. Yeah, that's e- that's easily what I do. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, Lee likes this? Like, no. Yeah. No way. So here's... Now it's the worst thing in the world. So here, let me clue you in on okay, some conversations we've had in the past. She'll be like, yeah, I think it'd be really cool if we did this. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, I think that's a great idea too. I've been wanting to do that forever. And then she'll be like, oh, never mind. You just took my thunder. I was really excited about it. But now you want to do it, so I don't want to do it. You've like, totally oh, done yeah. that like multiple That's times. That's exactly what happened. That is exactly what's happened at least three times. Oh, clearly. It is. Clearly that's the problem. <laughs> it is. Clearly. You told me I stole your thunder because it was something you were really excited about and you wanted it for you only. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, why couldn't we both do it? Okay. 
But do you generally play an existing superhero, or you create a whole new one? And if you play, say, Batman, are you kind of stuck with that canon? So, in no. this game, Com- you Comic created... books, there's, like, a million different versions of Batman. Yeah, you created your own yeah. superhero. So but... So, you got to pick what your abilities were. But I've done both. But you could also just be, like, a really smart person with, like, gadgets, too. You know? You so can like, make... Iron Man, right? You could... You yeah, know. you can make any superhero that's ever existed. That's like you can do that in any game. Like mutants and masterminds are the same way. It's got every ability. You know what I mean? Like that you can think of. Right? So you could make Batman if you wanted. I've you're, helped you're people. saying these words, but like I haven't played that game and like I know zero things about it. So like your your words do not it's, do not okay. equate. I know that doesn't mean anything. It does not so compute. I'll just... Mutants and Masterminds is 3.5 converted to a superhero game. And it does I a mean, good job of replicating Superman and Batman. And even though they're completely different on the, the scale of powers, it does a great job of balancing them. So even though Batman is... or Yeah, Batman's extremely smart and has his gadgets. And Superman's extremely strong and extremely fast and able to shoot lasers and have x-ray vision... They're not that far off, like from the the possibility of what you can do. Uh, so you could play an existing superhero. For example, if somebody came to me and said, "I want to play the X Men," I could legit create the X Men using the system, no problem. But then I'm not rolling for random stuff or anything like that. I'm just taking the stuff that's in there and making it rather than rolling for randomness. Because you can, you're technically supposed to roll for random abilities and roll for a random class and all this stuff. But I I didn't even do that with you guys. I would ask people, what do you want to play? Do you want, like, so Paula has played that game with three different characters. One of them was kind of like a female version of Thor. Remember that? And so that one was kind of cool too. No. You don't remember that? That was just me and you playing. No. Was, well, oh my gosh. Anyways. You said you had a blast playing it. You even said it on this channel before. So, anyways. um, Yes, you can do either or. It doesn't matter. And no, you're not stuck using anything. Like, five years ago I said this one thing and now I'm like stuck with it and I can't. In fairness, we kind of scared, uh, scarred Juice into never painting a mini again. (laughs) Remember the zombie ranger. Yeah, see, now you're going to steer me off of ever playing a superhero game again. What the heck, Paula? You're going to make me never run a Descent into Avernus game again because I railroad you guys too much. Gosh, you're tearing me down. Um, So if I wanted to be the Punisher, I could be. Yeah, dude. So, yes. Paula doesn't want to talk about this, though. She hates this conversation. So what maybe no, what we will fine. do... No, it's fine. I'm just, like, <laughs> maybe, I'm just painting over here. Maybe what we'll do, no, Roll No, you guys stats, can talk whatever you want is, to talk. We'll talk, talk about it. No, we'll talk superheroes fine. on a dedicated live stream. Um you know just one day just for fun it'll be great you'll love it i'll even pull out my heroes unlimited books and we'll go through it <laughs> well maybe we'll even make you a character just for the hell of it but yeah he would be very easy to make so paula what do you want to talk about well that's why i said you guys keep talking about whatever you want to talk about i don't have i'm not an interesting person <laughs> like i don't know what you guys expect of me I don't know. You, apparently, we're not interesting either because we're talking about superheroes and you don't care. <laughs> no, I just said, like, <sighs> whatever. Do what you want, man. Do what you want. Uh, Do the thing. So, anyways. Um, see, but, like, a lot of stuff I'm totally interested in talking about you don't want to talk about. Like, I like talking about mechanics. You're not interested in talking about mechanics, usually. You know? It's okay. Let's talk about whatever you want to talk about. I don't know. You're the one who said you... Like, I was on a roll. Yeah, come out here and paint tonight. So, yeah, like, I wanted to paint minis. I'm out here and I'm painting like you asked me to, so like... You don't want to paint minis? No, I'm just saying... <laughs> man. What? You're the worst. How am I the worst? Why am I the worst? I don't know. How are you <laughs> painting this weird fountain thing? Uh, you chose the fountain. Uh, well, I thought you were a sorcerer, but now that's blown. 
So, anyways. You're, like, over here, like, ratting me out for not being cool anymore. I have never said you aren't cool. In fact, last week I had uh, two people on here where I was totally praising how awesome you are. Yeah? Yes. What would you say about me? Well, I'm, you'll I'm have cool to watch as... and find out. Oh, you know I'm not going to do that. Then you're never going to know. Uh, you're never going to know. What? <laughs> I was expecting wild magic. <laughs> So, that's what we were expecting, Paula. Wild magic. <laughs> we haven't even used wild magic sorcerer. Paula doesn't like the wild magic sorcerer. She does, if she's sticking no, to just the main I book, just, it's the draconic so one. So, here's my pet peeve no matter what. about the wild magic. Is that it's, it's just random. like... Yeah, but like... Same reason she didn't like it, Heroes Unlimited. Random powers that she told me she'd rather do rather than pick them. It just, it never <laughs> makes sense to do that because there's so many that are so negative and suck so bad that it's like, Remember, this is oh, Power Gamer Polly. Or, or I can have a cool armor class and like breathe fire and get damage resistance and, you know, Optimize. or, or my magic could magically backfire and just start a fire instead. Or polymorph the big red dragon into a frog you know it's just like man which would be awesome whatever next time i'm gonna i'm gonna do it I'm nope gonna, i'm not gonna let you play sorcerer next you. time I won't, I won't let you sorcerers are banned from my future games forever that you play in you're so <laughs> mean to me <laughs> what i have to deal with wild magic sorcerers are banned because paula doesn't like them <laughs> people are like i want to play one nope paula banned them from my games forever no, I didn't. Oh, yeah, you did. On that live stream, remember? Yeah, I told you. Banned forever. <laughs> so, roll stats. Have you checked out Pathfinder 2 yet? Yes or no? Oh, my gosh. Uh, that's what I want to talk about. That's what's been on my mind for like a month. Pathfinder 2 sounds so interesting to me. I mean, he said, like, he's like, we're buying the book. And I'm like, we're not buying the book. After telling me, she's like, yeah, it sounds cool. It sounds like a system I would really like more than D&D &D 5e. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, let's do this. And I've been stewing on it for a week. Like, we should do it. We should, we should totally do it. Oh, but I don't know if I like it. Like, I've been going back and forth, man. And then, boom, I said today, yeah, let's do it. And she's like... Not right now. We can wait. I'm like, what? What do you mean we can wait? We don't even have any like time to play in more games. I've got Friday anything. nights. I've got Friday nights. Plus, I'm looking to play games right now more than run them. Yeah, we. So there's plenty of games I can play. Find a group to play with. Or I already something. did Sunday Starfinder if you wanted to. No, I said for Pathfinder. I already had that lined up a couple weeks ago too. If I wanted, I had a few people interested. Since then, two of them have gone off to play other games of Pathfinder with other people. Because I didn't, I was like, I don't have the book yet. <laughs> hey, Brett finally got his power back after that fire today. Oh my gosh. New name for Paula's channel. Power Gaming with Paula. You say min-maxing, we say don't be stupid. <laughs> so uh, I originally pitched that as the idea for her channel. Uh, and she didn't want a negative connotation with it. So she went with awkwardly nerdy back in the day. She also didn't realize she was a power gamer back then. And then when she realized it, it was a couple years later. And she was like, oh my gosh, I'm really a power gamer, aren't well, I? Well, no, so here's the <laughs> thing that makes me mad, though, is that, like, everybody says it's, like, put such a bad spin on it. Like, it's such a terrible if thing. If you don't role like, play at all, it is. Oh, I have power gamers in my group, and I don't know how to deal with life now. Like, it's such a tragedy, and everything's falling to pieces. Like, how many times do you see that woe is me post in, like, a and d group or an RPG group or whatever? And you're just like, ah, oh, come on, get it together. Like, I don't know. Don't worry about it. Why do you have to do anything else different? Like, they're going to run into orcs. They're going to run into effing orcs. Like, they kill all of them? Great. Move on. Mm-hmm. You know? Start a new story. So Rollstat says, I got the core rulebook, bestiary, and the game mastery guide. It looks great. I can't find anyone to play. Everyone wants to play 5e. So that's not true. 
They're, um, okay, so it sounds not like true. Roll Stats wants to run a game that we're going to play in. Does he want to run a game is that, that we're going to play in? Is that what you're saying? Like, then we have to buy two players. You handles. know. Why do we have to buy two? Because you need one. You're going to be in your office and I'll be out here. No. Nah, you're going to play without one? Yeah. <laughs> Chances are you're playing a spellcaster though, right? You, you'll need something. You'll need it. I got this. Don't worry about it. All right. It. Whatever. Watch. Mid-game should be coming out here trying to grab my book. I need this. I can't remember my spells. Well, you should have wrote them all down word for word on a piece of paper. Because <laughs> we can't print it because we don't have a working printer. So I have fun handwriting you, that shit. You make it sound like we're like living in the dark ages. We right are. Here. I feel so poor. Don't have a working printer. <laughs> whatever i told someone about that the other day they're like how do you survive without a working printer i'm not even kidding i was like well easy i printed all my players my character sheets out like at once a while back i'm down to one more left <laughs> so like, i'm still what okay what do we need a printer for i print out usually my notes for sessions and it's it's easier for me physically if i have like my four pages of notes <laughs> rather than having to either scroll on the computer to find the page in the book on D&D Beyond, or rather than having to scroll through a PDF or my notes in a Google Doc, it's so much easier for me. Control, find that shit, homeboy. Doesn't work for me. You got this. Does not work for me. Anyways, uh, Roll Stats says, I do want to run a game, but the game I want to run is Call of Cthulhu. You guys promised. Yeah, I'd rather play Pathfinder. <laughs> Paula, we, we signed Paula up for Call of Cthulhu. I already know I don't want to play Call of Cthulhu. I mean, I will. I will. I'll play Call of Cthulhu. Yeah. You gotta, I just am not excited about it. You got to find people to play. I wouldn't play a campaign. I'd play like a single session though. You got to find people to play, man. I got a Discord of over 100 people. We can find four people No, I'm saying play. he needs to find people to yes, play Yes, and Call I'm saying Cthulhu. I can find enough people for a session. Oh, okay. That's what so I'm saying. He's in my Discord. Let's play. I don't know how to make a character. Yeah, I'll produce it for... Uh, I'll put it on my YouTube channel. That'd be cool. I'd love that. Uh, you know what? You make me a pre-gen roll stats. Give me... Um, let's see. But does he want to play Ooh, like a this campaign? This is what I want to play. Wait, hold on. I'm not doing a campaign. Do you want to play a campaign or a one-shot? Well, I don't, I don't care what you want to play. I'm you should care. I'm roll stats what he wants to play. He's the priority all right, right now. All right, goal roll stats. What do you want to do? You need to tell us, man. Tell us you need what tell you Paula. want to do. You need to tell Paula. I guess I would produce it and not play in it if it was a campaign. That'd be fine by me. Yeah, just tell us what you want to do. And, we and can Paula make will make happen. it happen. She's got her own channel. We're going to reopen that shit. We're not reopening anything. You got you to gotta run awkwardly nerdy Cthulhu. Like when Jay think Bruce of the was, merchandise. The other think night, of the merchandise. The other night, a pink and purple peace sign Cthulhu. <laughs> the other night when Jake was like, "Yeah, I'm probably you're working on it," I was like, "I'm not working on shit." Like, yeah, she doesn't do anything. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Jake. Like, I don't know if you're just trying to make people feel better so that like I'm included in the words that you're saying, but also. But yeah, I would personally play in a one shot. That's where I'm at. If we did a campaign, I would be more than happy to produce it or play in the first session and have my character go madly insane so I don't have to play it a bunch. That would be cool. Uh, I say we start with a one shot. If you guys dig it, we can make it a regular game. And actually, I would run a Pathfinder 2e game if you wanted to produce it. Yeah, dude. I would totally do that. Okay, both. We'll do yes. a Call of Cthulhu game first. Yes. And then you can for sure run a Pathfinder game. And then... So the other question is, will we use Roll20 and stuff? I don't know. Like, what I know, are the I'm choices? Just I mean, Theater of the Mind, like we do our other games, where you don't have miniatures. I mean, it's all of his choice, right? And what does he want to do? Not necessarily. I, I mean, it's partially his. I don't know. I don't know anything about anything. Like literally. Tell I wasn't me really asking you. When to I was show asking up. him. I <laughs> so. know. Okay, fine. <laughs> 
So, Paula, should we use Roll20? Should we use Fantasy Grounds? What about some of the other virtual tabletops? You want to talk about your specialties? You know this? what? You're the one who wanted me <laughs> on here, okay? I don't know what you're trying to do. Nothing. Like, <laughs> you just are like so defensive when I say I'm something. just trying to talk. I feel so attacked every time I say something, though. <sighs> All right. Yeah, so, because the other thing is, you know, uh, Pathfinder has always, in 3.5 in general, lended itself to a lot of miniature play right like a lot of the mechanics are based were based around that like you know you played 3.5 i never played 3.5 mm-hmm. we never had miniatures so how'd you work your way around some of the miniature based rules what do you mean like what like distances and everything is based on miniatures like how did you just determine it's more like 5e is a little bit more open to interpretation whereas 3.5 was more specific right? you know like what's an example of i don't know i never specific. played it i never played it some of the feats might say oh you can cleave two or three things around you in a five foot square or whatever yeah the same way you play theater of the mind like okay you know sure like when things get confusing in theater of the mind and you're sitting around other people what do you then do you, you argue you put, about the rules no you put That's down you do. a piece of paper and you're like well i'm i'm right here i'm the x like i'm the x like over here all the monsters are o's like oh okay cool got it moving on like and you, you argue about the rules. No, you just ask, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, is there another one right over here? Oh, yeah, for sure, dude. So he says, Call of Cthulhu is almost all theater of the mind. No worries there. I think we should use Roll20 for Pathfinder 2E because it's more tactical. That's what I thought. And I, I agree about Call of Cthulhu. I wouldn't use miniatures for that ever, probably. Not even the old D20 version. Where I don't think it makes a ton of sense. Oh, But, yeah, I, um, I do not... Use Roll20, though. I don't use any virtual tabletops. Tops. Um, so I would have to do a test run to make sure my computer could handle Roll20 with it. Um, something that I've seen other people do is they use Google uh, Presentation or whatever. It's basically PowerPoint. And they use the slides as the, the map. They'll put the map in there. And then mm-hmm. they'll make round tokens and put those in there for monsters and everything else. And then share it with everybody in the group to use it just like you're using Roll20. So then everyone can move their own tokens. Oh, okay. So, but you're using a PowerPoint rather than a, you know, a virtual tabletop. The macros in Roll20 make it so much easier to run. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Do you have a Pathfinder 2E on Roll20? Because that's the other thing. If you don't have that, is that going to still be as easy? I feel like Roll Stats knows things. You say that about everybody. You always say that you feel like I know nothing. I didn't say that. Not tonight. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you're so mean to me. How how is that mean to you? That, that's I'm not, that's I, not being mean to you. I don't say you know nothing. No, you just defer to the people in the chat over every time. I like their answers. Just like in real life. I like their answers. Just like in real life. Oh, no, no, no. No Discord. Nope. We got to use Zoom. I have a Zoom account. I will not use Discord. Discord is so unreliable Um, for video and for sound. I've I've had I've had issues with because we tried to use Discord for some chats without recording it before and people dropped and it sounded bad. It was awful. And I've done the same thing with the same people using Zoom, and it's been perfect. So, uh, yeah, I'm cool with using Roll20. I uh, just got to see if I can make it work right. Um, and, yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, so Zoom will work, and then he has to set up, or he's setting up macros right now for 2E. Okay, perfect. See, he was just like, screw work. He was like, call of Cthulhu, here I come. <laughs> So I will say this. I want to play a Barbarian. A Pathfinder 2E Barbarian. I'm calling dibs on the oh, Barbarian. Okay, so we need. I need to know. You man, could be an I Alchemist. 
No, 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 no. I need to know about Call of Cthulhu. Oh. It's modern like, day. Okay. But like unless he's I running an older time period, like a hundred years ago. 50 I don't years know ago. anything about the types of characters you can play. Normal people. Any normal person you can think of. Yeah, or, but like or a celebrity or whatever. Okay. You could be a oh, I got an idea. You could be a project manager from an arts and crafts distributor. Shut up. That would be so awesome. I've always wanted to play that class. Shut your mouth. So, to give you an idea, I played a ex-military PTSD guy in the game I played, and we had a high school (laughs) job and a high school outcast. (laughs) That's exactly what happened, Paula. I literally said, screw this. (laughs) Shut my browser down. Real stats, what do you do? I probably asked you like 87 times, but I have zero memory, so. See? That's why she can't remember the Heroes game we were talking about earlier. She can't remember the last D&D session that we've had, usually. Oh, it's totally. She'll mix seven sessions. Okay, when we used to look at houses, we would look at houses before we'd buy a house. We've done this a couple times now. And every time we were house hunting, she would literally take the best feature of the eight houses we looked at in the weekend and build this dream master house of all of them. But, like, that's the house I wanted. <laughs> but that didn't exist. Cameron, yeah, you are late. This is the first. You're usually the first one in here. Ah, oh, you're missing it, man. You might have to go back and watch this. This has been intense. I mean, it's, it's a high I'm profile. sweating. I'm sweating. It's high so intense. High profile stream. You can do anything special with him at the top? Yeah, so here is my plan. I'm going to make the trident gold. Yes. I'm going to make his robe sort of like a brownish sparkly color. Why? I'm just curious. To, you know, create depth and, I don't know, contrast and something interesting. Like, I can't just do, like, guys. Hold she on. would be so excited. digital exci- marketing. Oh, she would yeah. be so excited if we bought, like, a miniature dungeon set and it was all rainbow and shit. <laughs> I'd be like, here's a rainbow dungeon. She'd be like, oh, that is so interesting. <laughs> How dynamic is this? I don't... Are we good? We on? This thing on? So Paula made this really gurgling throw up noise and it killed the sound. <laughs> I'm not even playing. Like, I wish this was an exaggeration. It was 100% not an exaggeration. She, we were talking about the statue guy, whether he should be uh, painted like a guy or a statue. And she was like, well, look how dynamic this is. And she held it up for you guys and was like, Bleh. And the audio was like, nope. Like, I saw it freak out. (laughs) So, yeah. (laughs) Must be using Discord server for sound. Nope. (laughs) Never again. So, I had to unplug my mic and plug it back in because it did not like the sound it heard. It was 
It was the most unattractive sound ever. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just trying to... Like, I understand your vision of, like, just paint it all one color. But no, like, I'm not saying paint it all one color. Oh no. I think you paint it, like, to look like a statue. I That's what I'm doing. It's uh-huh. gonna look like a statue. So, did you... Roll stats. Did were you did you guys hear when she was asking what kind of characters could she play? Uh, she was very confused about what type of character she could play. Well, yeah, I mean, you said, "Hey, you should be a project manager." Well, yeah, I was joking, but you basically play normal people. That's what Call of Cthulhu is. It's no, I know, but like, to go and I say. didn't know if there's like different class options or like i literally don't know Probably. anything so like i need I mean, I need the details it would depend i think you know of what is gonna happen here what? yeah so tell us more roll stats about this call of cthulhu yeah like i need to know things about how it works she wants to have an idea for what she should play yeah I can't figure things out. I mean, it doesn't matter. You're going to go insane. That's the idea. By the end of the session, your character will be completely well, insane. Well, it doesn't matter. That's, I mean, that's kind of dumb. That's like saying, oh, no, okay, well, it doesn't no, matter it, what happens in D&D because your character No, 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 no. Okay, it's, okay. It's like, yes, you can play a fighter. You could do this or that. But that's not the part that makes the game interesting. Right? It's going to be your role play. And how you react and interact with the environment and your character going insane. That's what makes it fun. Okay, yeah. cool. But like also, what do I need to do to make a character? So, I don't, I, so the best way to describe to Call out, of Cthulhu... Here, hang on. I'm trying to figure out me, how, how do I make a character. This is what he like, says. It doesn't matter. No, well, I mean, it doesn't. So this is what he said. The best way I can describe Call of Cthulhu is Sherlock Holmes meets Jack the Ripper with a lot of creepy cultists. Okay. Perfect. Like, so I was just asking generically. He like, said the same thing. So his answer to your question is, again, the best way I can describe Call of Cthulhu is Sherlock Holmes. Uh, it's a skill-based game, no class or levels. Okay. So see, that you just got to tell me that part. So how do you create a character, Roll Stats? Yeah, we don't, we don't know these things. We need to know all the things for Call of Cthulhu. I mean, I understand. I I've read? talked about it enough with other people. But, um, yeah. Should I bring my Cthulhu with me? Your Cthulhu? What Cthulhu? Your miniature? Yeah, the I big was one? just joking. I don't I think you should. I think if he runs a good game, you won't want to see that Cthulhu anymore. But if he doesn't run a good game, then whatever. You'll, you'll sleep with that thing. Uh, you have occupations, not classes. So, like... An archaeologist, or a librarian, or a detective, or a project manager at Notions Marketing. I'm not going to play a project manager at Notions Marketing. (laughs) Zero stats. Or a janitor. So, yeah, so you choose those things, and then you get skills. What are the requirements? Never no, I gotta tell you a story later. Oh, it okay. Was so bad. So yeah, you do these things. So you choose these I things, and it gives you. Shut. It's okay. Keep your mouth shut. So you choose your class, or what? Not your class. Your occupation, and then you get skills, and that's what you're good at. That's that. You then come up with your character's like background, like oh, my name's Susie. Okay, so I'm a high school dropout. What um. What kind of, like, what year is it roll stats? Like, Uh, what year do you typically do? Because I've seen a lot of people run Call of Cthulhu will do, like, 1920s. Yes. You know. Or today. That makes a difference. Well, yeah, it does. You can't be a project manager in the 1920s. Yeah, I mean, I can't even. How would you do your job? I can't even hardly vote. So, like, I need (laughs) to know. Oh, well, you could play a man. Oh, gosh. Well, Stats plays women. He played a woman in uh, our Rad Wasteland game. He was hilarious. He was great. I think he was dropping, oh, sugar, oh, darling. It was great. I loved it. I loved his role play in that game. Did you play that game with us? Can I be a a 1920s, like, female activist? (laughs) No. you'll, You'll die. 
No, it would be perfect. Yeah, so you get skills. Points are allotted to specific skills, and you get some buffs from those skills sometimes. But mostly the skills are problem-solving and investigative. Yeah, activists are smart people. <laughs> I'm going to be independently wealthy. So you killed your husband? Is that how you did it? Oh, that? that's a great story. Yeah? Yes. You are solving a mystery and less murder hoboing. I play in the 20s and 30s. It's the best. But you can play ancient civilizations and you can play modern day. So yeah, she's going to be a widow, independently wealthy, because she murdered her popcorn business uh, husband. Yeah, he... Um... I don't know. I just popcorn came to mind for some reason. I think I was thinking of Orville Redenbacher or something. You could be a suffragette. Suff- I don't know what that is. My, he, my intelligence he doesn't, is he doesn't want me to be independently wealthy. I mean, it doesn't matter even if you are. You could be the richest character in the game. No escape in the madness. <laughs> After August 1920, and you can vote. <laughs> Did you just Google that, Paul? Actually, you're you're not from America, so you definitely know our laws and rules better than us. <laughs> yeah, you could be a widower, a wealthy widower. Perfect. Well, you'd have to be because you can't drive yet either, probably. I also can't own property if my husband's alive. Maybe you have a son. Maybe you're old. A woman seeking the right to vote through organized protest. Yeah. Suffragette. A woman seeking the right to vote through organized protest. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know anything about that stuff. I mean... Okay. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I Google, LOL. So you could have just said you knew that. I for You could have been like, I had to know it in order to become uh, a resident in Michigan or something, and I would have bought it. <laughs> Uh, just go with, just go with the thing that makes you smarter and I will believe it. Don't worry, it's okay. I'm not mad. So, I totally need to get into 3D printing by next year. There's so many cool things to 3D print. Like so many. And the cheapness, like the amount it would cost to print the perfect mini for your characters and stuff or your monster you want for that session or your set piece oh it's just a stink bug you're so oh. scared it's inside the light so. sounds like a bat or something <laughs> like a crab no like oh god we're being attacked no there's a couple little bugs on the ceiling there too help help <laughs> but yeah you need to get into that uh 3d printing game Paul, you like the idea of Call of Cthulhu, don't you? Mm. <laughs> I just had to, so that I can play and spell Euchre for that. So I uh, can't play Euchre. I've been shown how to play it about 30 times, and I still have no idea. Yeah, so it still looks like you just pick whatever card you want and throw it out for no apparent reason. No, oh my gosh. It is. Oh, I've got these cards in my hand. Okay, I've got a lot of the red of diamonds. I'm going to call diamonds. Right? Isn't that the idea? So you throw a diamond out? No, but like... But you have no idea what your partner has. Your partner has no idea what you have, so it's stupid as hell. (laughs) Because you're still just picking a completely random thing, hoping you're right, and whatever you pick fucks the whole game up. It's it's a mess. I hate that game. I absolutely hate Euchre. All right, you do that, Roll Stats. We're just going to talk about Euchre for a minute. Yeah, Euchre, I just don't get it. I'm assuming you know how to play, Paul. Why do you assume Paul knows how to play? Because he said, I just had to, so that I can play and spell Euchre for that, to become a resident in Michigan. Oh, yeah, because it's a Michigan thing. Right. I think Indiana knows it, too. Indiana, Michigan. You know, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Unless you play with deaf people, they cheat. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. How do they cheat? <laughs> they start signing to their partner who also is deaf. <laughs> and then you and your partner are like, I don't know what they just said, but they're going to run us. 
Oh, that is great. <laughs> Uh, well, maybe you need to play against some deaf people so that you can speak across the table to your partner. Right? Yes, so. That's what I would do. Not really. <laughs> but that was pretty good. You got me there, Paul. So, Paul, how are you doing? I haven't talked to you in a while. I mean, I have kind of in our Discord. I appreciate how active you are in our Discord. It's been nice. Yeah, how's was like... I told my wife about what I told you about our wives' conversation. She said it was not fair. Oh, but yeah. she did say it was all factual. Yeah, but he, like, didn't mention the fact that, like, I do everything else that he didn't list. Uh-huh. Everything else. Like, kill the wasps. Forgot about that one. I, you know what? Get the spider. Get the spider. Get the spider! I won't go eight feet closer to it. <laughs> I won't even walk by it to get to the other room, even though it's on the far wall. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. I said. Oh, today, his mother-in-law is deaf and took a while to catch on that that they sign for everything. Interesting. They might be able to read lips. Yeah, they can read lips, but if you cup your mouth so that the people on the side of you can't see your lips, they can't. You know. Or if you cover your mouth with your cards, you could just talk the whole time. And they would never know. It'd be so easy. So easy. Although I bet you your father-in-law is not deaf, so he would totally blow your cover. That would suck. Then you'd lose, because they're cheating. Yeah, that's not fair if they're cheating. How is that fun if they're cheating? Like, I can't imagine if I know... That I can easily just cheat. The other people aren't going to know. And I win every time. That would not be fun for me. You're not working at the hospital and went back to the ambulance. More money and a day shift. That's right. You had said that in the Discord. That's good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about... There was a position that opened up at my wife's work, but it's an internal position. At first, she didn't realize that, so she sent it to me. I was like, oh, I, this would be awesome. This would be perfect. And then we found out it was only internal. But if it ever goes external, I am going to be all over that thing. All over that thing. Because that would be cool. It would allow me to work from home, too, at least in the meantime, wouldn't it? Yeah, they have to. Yeah. So who knows for how long, but that would be cool. Did you erase yeah, all your work? right now, no. Oh, okay. I accidentally hit something I wasn't supposed to. Oh, okay. Um, But yeah, it would be cool. It would be a nice little extra income kind of thing. You okay over there? Oh, yeah, I'm looking at your trident. Okay, I have a question, Juice. Do you ever get nervous when running for other DMs? Like performance anxiety. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, yes and no. Not other DMs. I get nervous running for people I've never ran games before. For. <laughs> for. But yeah, whatever. You know what I'm saying. If I've never run a game for someone and they're at my table, I sometimes get that nervousness. Um, so it's usually at the start of a campaign. But once I'm into a campaign and stuff, I get more angry at myself leading up to a session or whatever about prep or... I get angry at myself about a session that I feel like I didn't do as good. I'm very critical of myself. But no, I don't, I don't, not for when running for other DMs. No. I feel like there's, there would be like certain celebrity people if I ran a game for that I would be freaking out about. Okay, the Descent game makes me super nervous. Why? I think that's why I don't like always role play as much or whatever. Why is it making because nervous? Because I don't know. Nate, like, Nate, his second game ever was with us. I know, but okay. like we kind of always like... Jake is the most laid back person in the world. I know, but we like we always do what Luke does, wants to do, so then it's like hard. So where's the pressure? Like, <laughs> because then you don't feel like you get to contribute as much. Well, that's not so then it's just like, oh. That leads to anxiety. I, for so you? then you're just like, am I being stupid? Are all my ideas stupid? 
No, Luke just pushes the pace. No, so that just makes, you know, it's like, oh, like I sent the video message. Nobody commented back or well, that's because said a well, word. Well, hang on, hang on. <laughs> so remember, you're dealing with people who are doing this full time and have day jobs. So you're dealing with people who, think about me, every night, imagine if I went to work all day, got home at 6 o'clock, ate dinner, and then I'm trying to make a career out of doing YouTube and running games as well, right? Yeah, but I'm just so saying. So when would they respond? Yeah, but I'm just saying, you know, like. It's not you. You know? So it's just, it's hard because it's like, oh, it just makes me feel like my ideas are stupid. Because everybody's like, eh, right. we're never going to go that way. Mm-hmm. So then it's just like, oh, no, okay, it's not so that I at all. Say anything. Luke goes for the quick result because Luke is, I don't know, he. I think he's like me. Like that's why I like playing a barbarian or something because I don't have to think of an in depth plan. I can just go, okay, I'm running in. You know, I try not to do that all the time because I try not to steal spotlight from other people. But there are times where I'm like, nope, tonight this is gonna be one of those nights, and I totally do that sometimes. I'm like, nope. Or the, the DM would be like, are you sure you don't want to take precaution? And I'm like, well, now that you say that, hell yeah, I'm sure. Let's do this. You know? But yeah, I wouldn't take it personal. Okay. Well, it makes me super nervous. He does it to the other two also. Yeah, I don't know. So it's like, not just a you. It's a, he does it to Jake. He does it to Yeah, but they me. don't they don't propose any ideas now. Jake does. Jake just hasn't been there for two and a half yeah. sessions. Nate's just quiet in general. He's always been the most quiet. Even when we ran our old game, he didn't usually propose a lot of ideas unless someone asked him. You know what I mean? He's kind of like your brother. He thinks things through a little more Mm -hmm. before he says something. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, our Descent game is not... It's a very fast-paced thing because Luke pushes the... Oh, Cameron says Luke has admitted to not having patience in games. Yes. He is a player, LOL. Yeah, it, like I, I, to, I said this the other day. You hear from the DM, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, man, like, so I don't know. It just makes me, so it just makes me nervous because I'm just like, no. are my ideas stupid? No. Because they're just like, nah, Mm-mm. we're just going to do this other thing. No, the problem with so your then, idea of the last game, for example, is that he knows what's going to happen. You have four people making stealth checks, three of which suck at stealth. I know. So I just <laughs> so he like, knows you're going to get caught and it's going to lead to battle anyway. <laughs> I know, but I just feel like it's like kind of meta to be like, hey, I know we're going to get caught. Right. So we should just bust in guns blazing. Right. It's like, I don't know. That's kind of. That's just how he I plays. feel like our characters wouldn't do that. No, his character would, though, because it's him playing it. So, all right, let me catch up on the chat here. So, Paul said, drop an application and see what happens. Ooh, uh, it's not posted to out. Yeah, I couldn't. You can't. There's nowhere to drop it. I could drop it on their doorstep, but nobody's there to pick it up either. Uh, can tell you are critical of yourself after your post on Discord. Same with myself, too. Yeah, especially after a session. I can't sleep after I run a game session. I have too much on my mind. Um, roll stats. Uh, we read that. Ampersand man. Nate is talkative as hell during the map. Oh, yeah, 100%. Nate. Nate does a great job with his channel. He's he's a good talker, um, you know. And, and even in other games, sometimes he comes up with more ideas and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't. Th- I would. I've say played that like four, five not, different campaigns with him before. I wouldn't say he's not talkative. I would say that I think he's more well thought like, out. Well, we've had this conversation before. Like, um, he's a little bit more reserved. Like, he's not going to interrupt anybody. Or right. talk over people to get his point across or anything like that. So if you're in that situation mm-hmm. and that's what he has to do, he's not going to do that. Like, I'm s- the same way. Yeah. It's also different doing a stream by yourself and playing in a campaign with five other people. You know? Like, if you're by yourself, you're just reading the chat and talking and having a good time. Um, and, and he's talking about, you know, stuff he loves, right? Um, whereas there's a lot of improv and things like that when you're running a game yeah, so and you're I, thinking on the fly. I actually don't think that it's not that he's yeah. not talkative or anything right. like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't think it's he that He just either. doesn't interrupt people <coughs> or talk over people Correct. or whatever. And me and, me and Luke definitely do. Um, correct. Yeah. 
yeah, we're very uh, dominating like that. Yeah, so it just ends up with, you know, a little bit more going on with you guys. Mm -hmm. Because... Paul says, had a group member that brought a similar problem a few years ago. We as a group had to talk about and see what we could do to help. So we've talked about it with Luke a little bit. I, in fact, I had told him after one session once, I, I had... Were you in it? I think either way, we told you about it after and talked about it with you too, but... We had told he was him, like, I need to just shut up. Yeah, he admitted he needed to shut up more. And uh, and then we're like, yeah, there's times when other people don't want to say something and they don't get their chance. <laughs> well, because, like, sometimes he always, like, you know, jumps in as far as conversation goes. And it's like. Right. I don't know. It's normal. I get it. Because I. Although I don't do that as a player very much. I actually sit back I'm a lot I'm sitting over here 100% barred. Like, man, you should be quiet. Yeah. And he's the dumb barbarian doing all the talking. Or he's well, the dumb he's fighter. He's the paladin. Yeah, he's the now, dumb fighter but... now. <laughs> or dumb paladin now. Uh, well, Stat says, I think I have the opposite problem. As a player, I tend to be a spotlight hog. Yeah, that's Luke, but it's not intentional. Uh, if no one else is so, saying anything, I'm glad to grab and run with it. Too. The role play is my favorite part. Sorry, I mean to interrupt you. Okay. And they said, I kind of imagine it as a movie in my head. All right, now, what were you going to say? I would say, full disclosure, like, we're not being, like, offensive or anything. Like No, Luke is, I, I've said I really enjoy Luke having great. Luke. great. Um, yeah, you know, he's really I, fun. No, I just want to say that because I don't want people to be like, oh, my God. Right. They're like dogging you. They're gonna they're gonna go on Luke's live stream in a couple days and be like, oh my god, you should have heard what Juice was saying. He was so mean. Yeah, no, like <laughs> everybody's great. Mm -hmm. No, we, I've had a blast with it, and it's been like I feel like so many funny stories are gonna come out of it. Not that you'll remember them, but I'll remember them. <laughs> and I'll be like, hey, Paula, you remember that time? She'd be like, nope. Well, I mean, I even said at the end of our last stream, I was like, or we could do this. And he's like, yeah, we're not going to be able to talk our way out of it. And I was like, yeah, we can if you shut up. Like, <laughs> I got, I was like, Luke, I took the silence spell for you. Like, I took it for you. So then his response, well, you can't cast it on me. You got to cast it in a location. And she's like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, stop moving. Don't walk. <laughs> Here, walk with me, talk with me before she casts silence. <laughs> uh, roll stats, you're not a spotlight hog. We played uh, that rad wasteland game and you didn't steal spotlight. Everyone seemed to share really well that game. Uh, roll stats says everyone is great. Some people are just greater than others. Ha 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 ha. I am pretty <laughs> great. So I also, the other issue I have in the Descent game is... Because, so I tend to run the game that if somebody says something first, I tend to go with it. And the reason I, I got into that habit that I probably need to shake a little with certain groups is because you would have players who would sit there and strategize for 10 minutes, like your brother's group and stuff. So the only way to stop people from always talking strategy all the damn time out of character, which every once in a while is fine. But the only way to actually stop it is to be like the first idea. Yeah, your character just does that. Go ahead, roll. Yeah. You know the, what I mean? The only downside that I think you have with that in that group is that sometimes it's like, oh, okay, this person won initiative. Okay, go ahead and say whatever you want. And so everybody else shuts up and nobody else says anything. And then it ends up you turning out like, oh, you and that player are having a conversation. And then... Now, okay, it's the next person's turn, and now it's combat. And so it's like, oh, man, nobody else got a chance to contribute to that conversation. Mm -hmm. So that's the only Well, sometimes downside. it's time-sensitive, too. Yeah, but that's the only downside that happens is it's like, okay, now you just, you just basically decided they're the only person who gets to talk. The dice did. No, it's, al it's always the same person, though. Is his initiative that good? I don't think it is now. I'm just saying that's the only downside is that then you've directed that person I mean, to be the only one to talk. when you're in a dungeon of cultists and you come around the corner and they're like, 
sitting there doing a ritual, raising the dead. No, They're not going to sit there and no, talk. No, last time when the cultists, I'm talking about, so the cultists walked up behind us, right? And you were like, everybody. Oh, yeah, that one I just Because to we were trying to talk, and yeah, you were that like, was everybody relevant. roll for initiative. And then, like, Luke won initiative. He was the only one who got to have a conversation. The rest of us had could only contribute in battle. Like, we lost Everybody out. moved. Towards the door without talking. No, I didn't even say I was doing anything until you started explaining what they were doing. And I said, I guess I'm moving to the door, too. Like, okay, you know, so it was just very like, you know. So it's kind of like that whole thing. He was the only person who got to talk. Okay, you could have tried on your turn. It, yeah, Even my, if turn, combat my turn was combat, and they sure. were already attacking us. I was sure. going to try and defuse the situation. I didn't have a chance to do that. Sure. I so I'm you. just saying, like, you, if you if you go initiative order for that, and nobody else gets to contribute, that's hard too because you keep saying like, "Hey, I want to encourage like Nate to talk more and Paula to talk more," sure. but then we don't have a chance to talk. So like, it's not my fault. <laughs> like, when am I going to talk? I'm not allowed to talk. You're always allowed to talk. You I'm you add that pressure on yourself. No, you go in or you were like Yeah, but you still could have talked. Like even go when com- and watch it. I did. Well, not that one yet. I watched the other one. <laughs> I'll rewatch that one and I I know I remember what happened with that. It, I get it. Combat started, attacks were made on both directions. You still can talk. Yeah, but you can still try no, to defuse. You specifically said, Oh, okay, it's Luke's turn. What are you gonna do? So he started right, a conversation. Because of the roles. And then, oh, okay, now, you know, nobody else can sure. talk. So no doesn't matter. Yeah, but you it doesn't so you if, rolled if he goes for first, initiative then it's the before, cultists and they stab you. You can yeah, still try to talk. But you rolled for initiative before anybody was even like fighting and so then right it made it, it before just made you guys it, were fighting no it made it no before they were fighting they didn't even attack us everybody was they were trying, going to though we were trying to like oh crap what do we do and then you were like okay everybody has to roll for initiative like we're not allowed to talk it's not that you're not allowed to talk just because you're in combat doesn't mean you have to do combat paul in our other game does a good example of still trying to defuse four rounds into combat <laughs> you know you can still try to do it you know there's never uh you can or can't do something it's a role-playing game you know technically you guys could have still tried to flee combat and fought and we would have went to a chase scene or something you know or you could have tried to talk you could have tried to do a spell that calms the situation there's a lot of things you still could have done i don't have any calming spells I have a bard without I have, manipulation spells? I have abilities <laughs> when I talk to people. When I right. physically talk to people. And right. when I talk to people individually, I have a lot of abilities. Mm-hmm. It's hard to do those abilities if you don't get to talk. I understand. I got it. Got it, got it, got it. See, I'm Paul, saying, this is why I was critical of the last game session. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I don't think... I think if I... If you want. I don't think I should play a dynamic character in Why? that campaign. Oh, in that campaign? Like, I think I should just play some... Our other game, you're able to talk a lot and you role play a lot. Um, Yeah, because I'm comfortable. Nobody talks over me, though, either. Okay. You know, so... It just makes a difference. So. Cameron, Cameron says, yeah, I wish the people I played with last had been a bit more on the role-playing side of things. We were doing the Tomb of Annihilation hex crawl part, and it really could have saved the party's fun. Olstat says, oh yeah, a hex crawl can be the greatest time or the worst time. And it all comes down to the role-play. Descriptions, player interaction, a hex crawl without that is drudgery. I agree. I can't just do combat simulator 24-7. So I think part of it, too, for me, is that I would like to spend more time role-playing. I Get it, I agree. And, you know, less time in combat, and I don't think I have, like, a group that wants to do a lot of role-playing. So I don't have, I like, I only have those two groups, and neither one of them do a lot of role-playing. You got Call of Cthulhu. I know, now I do. <laughs> I, so I also told you we should get a all-girls group going for you. I thought that would be cool. Like, purposely find, like, role-playing girls, not necessarily, like, combat simulation as girls. And I've tried to make that happen. 
haven't seemed interested in jumping into my Discord. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have time for those. Like that Discord was so like, oh gosh, daunting. See, it's still like metal. Mhm. Things going okay, right? Yeah, it looks fine. Dynamic. It looks bit. good so far. Yeah, Ish. I think it looks good. I I'm dig it. Trying to make it more interesting. I dig it. It looks good. It looks like a copper road or something. Mm. That's what I'm saying. All right, roll stats set. See, you're going to love Call of Cthulhu, Paula. It's all about solving problems by talking through them, solving a mystery, and your skills assist you in that. That's totally why it doesn't even sound interesting to me. <laughs> I know that sounds like a ton of you fun. You love mystery shows and movies and everything. Oh, yeah, I do. I hate them. It doesn't mean I'm any Not good hate. at it, though, full disclosure. Like, it doesn't mean I know things. We should wrap this up. It's all right. Late. Yeah. I, I, uh, Call of Cthulhu just doesn't interest me. That's all. I, I again, I'll play. I've got I've got one session in me that I'll do, but I just don't think I will be good for that kind of game. Okay, here's where we are right now, you guys. I think it looks cool. You know, what do you have left, do you, in your mind? Oh, I need to do like some highlights and lowlights and put this together and make it look like it works together correctly. Okay. And then seal it. Yeah. Like for sure. actually take it and spray it. Right? Are you gonna do matte or are you gonna do the shiny? What are you gonna do? Or gloss. Mm-hmm. Glossy or matte finish. I don't know. You don't know. I guess we're gonna find out. No, I think we're it looks good. Have to wait I think see. it looks really good. Tune in next time. When are we gonna do that? Friday? Are you wanting to do it Friday? Right now I'm tired and I have a headache, so who knows? Look at that. I gave her a headache. It's a bad time to... I didn't... Shit. I didn't wear my glasses or anything, so it's probably a bad time. Oh, oh your blue blue light glasses it's or whatever? It's really bright out here. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be so bright. You complained in the past when we painted that it's not bright enough and you can't see the miniatures. I know. It's because I usually have my glasses on and they're dark yellow. I'm telling you. I'm trying to solve problems and you're telling me not to. Uh, all right, guys. We are going to end this right here. What's that? Fine. Keep going. What would you say? Nothing. I just said I felt like it went down. So. Oh, okay. Uh, so we're going to end right there. Uh, we have more streams this week. So we had two today. We have the Forgotten Throne tomorrow. We have, which you might find out if Renmer and company get killed by the two b- adult black dragons that they are fighting at 7th level. Uh, Thursday, we have Crystal Frazier on at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Friday, we might be streaming finishing this miniature. And then Saturday, we have the Black Rock Adventures game. And Sunday, we have the Adventures of Aaliyah... Barora, I think is her character's name. Uh, so we have every night until Monday, and even then we'll probably be streaming uh, some more mini painting. So we have a lot of streams coming on the next seven days. So uh, make sure you are subscribed. Hit that notification bell so you uh, don't miss another episode. And uh, stay tuned to the Discord and the Facebook page and Twitter. Uh, I tend to post... Uh, earlier in the day when I know we're going on stream and I also try to post about a minute or two before we go on stream so uh, you know all that good stuff so anyways that's it I had fun did you have fun even though you're arguing with me and really mad at me about stuff I'm not mad at you about stuff okay (laughs) she's not mad at me that's good I'm expressing (laughs) my opinion all right guys Uh, game on